You know, we had every single guest who's ever been on Progressive Soup, and that's like 400 shows. That's like 250 or 300 different guests. We had every single one of them scheduled today. And either none of them showed up, or all of them showed up at the same time, and the chair they all sat in the same chair. I don't know, maybe it's... It, there is a hole in the floor. Yeah, maybe. We lost them all. That's right. Oh, my God, what the hell are we going to do now? <laughs> no. Okay, well, you know, we were... We gotta, we gotta go with, we gotta go with the flow on this. We gotta come up with something a little bit. We gotta, we gotta um, improvise. Yeah. So what but, we decide. So we got, so we got. I, I'm looking out in the audience, and I'm looking, and I'm seeing this guy. It's actually not a guy, but a silhouette of a guy, over there in the audience, and he kind of looks like, he kind of looks like a Volkswagen, sitting on its rear bumper. Huh. You know, there you go. It's Alfred Hitchcock. Ah. So that's it. So we got to do movies. Got to. Okay, that's that's our clue. Okay. Okay, so we got so so Alfred's out there. Hey, look, not only that, but there's that tall guy in the stovepipe hat. Yeah. Lincoln, Lincoln's out there yeah, too. Abraham Man, Lincoln. we got everybody. We got some we got some we, we, this is perfect for movies. We got to talk about movies today. Okay. Great. So Top 10. Our top oh, 10 Oh, but, but, but hold on. Wait, 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 wait. There's um actually is that the cast of 12 angry men out there? 12 <gasps> pissed off guys. Oh. Uh, oh, well, I guess not. Well, that was close. Okay. So have you you seen 12 Angry Men? I, yeah. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, that's, it, was, that's, it was based on a play. Yeah, and, and I, the Henry Fonda and, and, right. and, and, and having to, to starting off as the only guy that... And he's not really even sure that the, that the kid's innocent. He just has kind of, you know, he just thinks it's important when a person's life is in um, is on the balance, hanging in the balance, that they got to talk about it a little bit. And it's it's interesting the way that it unfolds. How did the movie? What what do you find interesting about the movie? Well, I I gotta I have to say that the one actor I was most impressed with in was Jack Klugman. He played. Yeah. Um, uh, he had a baseball. Uh, what was his role? I don't know. He was just probably one of them at the beginning that, like, he wanted to get out of there. He was in here, hurried to get out of there, and he was like, the guy is guilty. I just want to get out of here. Um, but um, I don't know. I, I just felt it was so interesting how you could have these 12 actors. The whole play took place, or movie took place in one room, essentially, and how um, each character really had to be so developed. And they all, were, they all were, all of them were, were some pretty, pretty yeah. well, well noted actors. Um, I, and I don't remember a lot of the, a lot of the, a lot yeah. of the individuals, a lot of the actors. But there was the guy, one that played the old guy, that um, that's kind of gets kind of snarky with some of the other guys right. when. Yeah, I think he'd been in a lot of Disney movies. I yeah. remember that actor at that time. It really influenced me. It really yeah. helped teach me about how great this country is. That that. The way the court system is set up, and when it functions properly, right. you really get it. They really get it right most of the time. You really can't argue too much with with jury verdicts, as long as people take the time and listen mm-hmm. and think through the facts that are presented to them, and uh, and aren't influenced by the uh, by the dramatics and the acting of the prosecuting attorney or the defense defense attorney. It, it's, it's it's it works out pretty well, I think, and it really gave me a good feeling about about the American justice system. I just think. All all the characters were so well developed, you know, and because well, when you have a movie based on a play, that's all that you really have is the actors, the, the character development. You yeah. Know, you don't have so now. You have special effects, and it doesn't really matter if the actors are any good. Yeah. But like back then, you really had to have real talented. Yeah. No laser you know, light shows or anything. No. No and bombs going off. No, no, no. Nobody falls out the window. Although I guess one of them comes close at one point. But, but it's it's kind of crazy. And and it's interesting because I've noticed when I see movies back from that time that you see a lot of the same actors in different films. Because I think there was another actor in Twelve Angry Men that was also in The Odd Couple. Jack with, Klugman. Um, Jack yep. Klugman. Jack Klugman. Yep. And there was an actor. He was also one of the friends of. Um, Oh, who are the the Odd Couple? Okay, well, anyway, it was actually the movie The Odd Couple with yeah. Jack Lemon and um, Mark. Oh, Jack Klugman and uh, I think Tony Randall was in the original movie. Yeah, that was the TV show, but this was. Oh, that's uh, right. Yeah, Jack Lemon and I, Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau. Yeah. yeah. 
And um, there was another actor that was in 12 Angry Men that was also in in um, The Odd Couple. But anyway, but um, no, I thought it was a really good play, and I was particularly impressed by Jack Klugman in that film. So... Uh, yeah, good movie. And they didn't do much. There wasn't much in the way of camera work, like you say. There's not much of, but but you do have some angles down from the top, so you get the overview of the uh, of the desk. Right. You get that omnipotent point of view, exactly. like you have sometimes in movies. Um, and 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 the cameras going back and forth, focusing on different people when they, mm-hmm. you know, quick lines. It's odd. I wonder how they how they actually do that. Do they have? Do they do the the lines in in snippets where? You, you take some guy saying five or six words, and then they break, and then they have to go and and do somebody else saying their five or six word line, and then have to all bring it together at the end. And, and huh? It's well, I don't know because I mean, if it's a play, it's just um, it all takes place in one room. So you'd think that they'd all be in in character, and they yeah. all have to like balance off of each other. So you think you it know? all kind of it all kind of unfolded from you know from point A to point Z. I think it so. might have. Yeah, it seemed to That's flow tr- seamlessly like that. But yeah. you know, I mean, there was one scene when um, Peter Peter Fonda and um, oh, I'm sorry, no, not P- Henry Fonda. And there's a yeah. scene maybe when he and another character are in the bathroom in the men's room, like yeah. washing their hands when they have a break. But I think that's Lee J. Cobb. I think that's the, yeah. that's the, that's the key. Uh, that's that's the guy that finally breaks down at the end. And, right, right, and, yeah. And uh, the one that's had had a bad relationship with his son. Son, exactly. And he's taking out you know his verdict on the yeah. poor you know the young man who's accused because he has a bad relationship with his son. You know, he's the last one who they have to change. Because yeah. everyone else is changing their minds, yeah. but um, and some of them come over not so reluctantly, and some of them some of them really hold out a, a lot to the end, right? Because um, it's you know they get their minds set on a certain notion, and it's 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 tough to because they have to look inward at themselves and and like you say put um, put themselves in the position of um, well this is not my son this is somebody else's kid right. this is somebody else's family member that that and I can't really take my anger at my son out on this other guy this other kid right no i think i think when you're in a play and you see all of these actors in character and they have to pick up the mannerisms they have to pick up like really it it just i just thought the acting was so good in that movie i'm king of the hill hey look 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 you know well what line was that movie? Throw from? that, throw, throw him overboard, will you? My God sakes, throw that guy overboard. What was that? Well, that was from Titanic, wasn't it? You know what? He didn't even get his line right. right. No wonder he didn't get an Academy what? Award. No, you know. It's a, hey, hey, Leo. It's I'm king of the world. You know. Not that I want you to say it again, but if you know, if you do. I must say that I'm not one to cry at movies, but I cried. Not I, I cried in Titanic, but I didn't. Cause I, you know I saw the movie and everyone's like, "Oh, Titanic, you're gonna cry," and I didn't cry till I was in the lobby after the film, and then it just hit me, and I just started bawling. And I think it was just it was there was something about that movie, and I normally don't cry at movies, but especially the scene when yeah. For me, the scene when she, they're, you know, they're, they're off the boat and they're floating like on a piece of wood. And yeah. He's frozen and she has to let him go and she sees him sinking to the end of the, the bottom of the ocean. That yeah. scene, that was, what about you? That was a killer scene for me. Did, did you cry for Titanic? Or, I, mean, I mean, what did you think of Titanic? When they came back and after you've seen all these, all these, uh, these scenes with, right. um, with with the two of them, with the two young people, and then you come back, and you have to reconnect the fact that this elderly woman who's on the ship right. is actually one of the two characters. It's uh, actually her, right. advanced in age. Yes. And then when she goes to the side of the boat, and we have no idea at this point because they're down there under sea looking <sighs> looking for the uh, well, it was emerald or diamond That's or right, something. The sapphire. They're, they're looking for yeah. the sapphire under the ocean. Yeah. And there she goes out on deck in the middle of the night on the frosty night. Yeah. And 
she reaches in her pocket okay. and she pulls out the sapphire. I know. And uh, and the, the first thought is no, 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 no. But then again, it's such a romantic thing that she yeah. she throws it overboard. Exactly. So that it finds its way back yep. to Jack. Exactly. Uh, Not that Leo deserved it, but you know. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. But yeah, it was um yeah it was um the the the, the connectivity between I between know. the person at at two different stages in their life and. And the, to see that she still had that, she, she was still the same person, that she'd been so deeply touched by, by that yeah. horrible accident that took place at, where she almost died and, and the man that she fell in love with and thankfully got away from, from, yeah. from, from that, that horrific dude that she was engaged to. I know. Um, yeah, that, and, and she still that, kept his last name when she finally got to land. She I took, had forgotten that, but yeah, you're right. Jack's yeah, last name. That's yeah. right. Yeah, and she created a whole new life for herself. That I is know. that is just just amazing. All right, enough All right. enough enough of the drear. Okay, another, let's another go movie. On. Another, yeah. Bring us out another movie. Well, uh, one movie I must see every Christmas is It's a Wonderful Life. That's one movie every year I have to watch. And I and I make sure I watch it <laughs> once a year, but it's never at never at th- between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, really? Because everybody else is watching it then, so I'll watch it. I'll watch it at some point during the year. But ah. yeah, that's um yeah. with, with uh, Jim, Jimmy Stewart. Jimmy Stewart, yeah. Yeah. That's that. Well, uh, I'll cry so, at the end of that. Somebody, yeah. somebody in the audience, somebody out there in that audience, probably Lincoln, because he's been dead for a hundred years, right, right, one hundred and fifty years. But somebody out there in the audience, maybe Hitchcock never saw it because okay. Hitchcock was too busy with other stuff. Hey, you know, you're, he's still sitting on his on his rear bumper. I think it is a Volkswagen. I don't think it is Hitchcock. Right. No. But but come on, about the, brief the audience on, uh, on on that's a wonderful life. What what what, what struck you about it? Well, I think how, you know, sometimes we can get stuck in our lives and we just get caught up in, you know, what we give importance to when we let things trouble us and and then what, you know, and then he has a chance to see what life would be like without him because sometimes you think, oh, I wish I weren't alive and then I wouldn't have all these things to worry about and, and then he realizes that what he has, he, he has to appreciate what he does have. You know, he has friends and a family that loves him, and and uh, he really has made an impact on the world. Like sometimes we think, what's the point of my being here? And my life is meaningless, and and uh, we just never know the impact that we have on the world and on people's lives. And maybe people could actually, you know, yeah, step outside of themselves and and step outside of their immediate world, and and look inward and 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 get a sense of of. Get a sense of themselves. Get a sense of what what they what they really mean to the people around them. Right. It's hard to do, but it, but it would be yeah. if you could do it. If a person could actually do that, it would be so beneficial. I think to anybody to know to know it, it not to know who your real friends are, but to know that even people that you may not think of as being impacted by you, how how they really are. Yeah, like there's that that novel, the five people you meet on the way to heaven. No, I can't do books. That's another show. All right, but I'm just. But go ahead. No, I'm. It's like. Don't make a movie out of it one day. So go ahead. It's going to be a movie one. I'm just saying that we don't know the impact we have on people's lives, and it might not even be the you know immediate. You could affect so. Yeah, you just never know. Just smiling at someone and yeah, the small things in the supermarket. You know, you could prevent someone from you know, might be having a bad day and wanting to commit suicide and just because, you know, you never know. Just paying ordinary act of kindness can, we don't know the impact. What I taught my kids, and I, and I, think, right. I, think, they, I think they got it, was when they were learning to drive, because here you are inside a car, right. you're insulated from the rest of the world, you're certainly insulated from other drivers, and it's so easy to get... Um, what, what, what's the word that the uh, those twelve angry dudes said? Pissed off. Okay. Right, okay. You can get pissed off at, at some dude in, in another car, and but if they cut you off, right. or if you cut them off, sometimes just a, a little, a little take. Hey, you know, sorry. Right. Exactly. Makes, makes it all makes it all okay. It, it takes the it takes the inhumanity out of it, and, and you recognize them, and they recognize you as a human being. Right. But since we since you brought up one one uh, one story. That's a book. I'm going to bring up one that's been a book and a movie because it's another one where a young girl is murdered. Mm. I'm king of the world. Will somebody shut up that stinking Leo DiCaprio? Uh, so. At least he got his line right this time. 
Oh, it's called, um, it, it's, it's called The Lovely Bones. Oh, okay. And it's about a young girl that's murdered by a neighbor. Oh. She's raped and murdered by a neighbor. Oh. And she's, she's still out there. She's still, oh. and she gets to, she becomes that omnipotent point of view on her family. Oh, wow. And the, the boy that she wishes she um, maybe had gotten to know better right. ends up getting close to her sister. Oh. And at first she's a little upset, but but then she sees right. you know nothing she could do about it. I mean she's, she's dead. Right, exactly. But it, that's a, that's a terrific story. It's called The Lovely Bones. It's been made into a movie, and it's it's um, it's that that notion of stepping outside yourself right. and and seeing how you've impacted people. And she gets a chance to see right. how much everybody misses her. Right. Yeah. And she actually finds a way somehow or other to kind of like in a whispery kind of way get a point across to a person in her life here and there. I don't, I don't know how she does it, but, but she's, she's, she's enough, there's right. enough of her left behind, enough of a whisper of her left behind right. that she can do that. Um, and another thing about It's a Wonderful Life too is that like he had to give up all his dreams, you know, he wanted to travel the world, but he didn't get to, and you know, and so he gave up college so his younger brother could study, and so his brother becomes a war hero, and his brother becomes famous, Yeah. but this angel comes to him and says, you know, and prevents him from killing himself, but says, if you hadn't saved your brother when he was eight years old... You know, sledding. Then he wouldn't have become the war hero. So what do you call it when you? What do you call it when you when you when you when you give out information about something that that? Um, spoiler alert! Uh, that's what it is. Spoiler, spoiler alert! Right. So it's just he, you he, remember, does, he, does, he doesn't jump off the bridge. Oh. But but, but <laughs> you know he's not going to anyway. I mean, you know, anybody that watches the movie knows when you get to that point that that something's going to happen right. to prevent him from doing that. So it just it just shows we or all the, our lives are important. Or We're angels, all important. Or the angel's going to go crazy and just push him off. Right. You know, exactly. You know, one or the other. Anyway, so that's why it's just a real feel good movie. You know. Uh, Here's another feel-good one. Another feel-good one? Pollyanna. Pollyanna, yes. Disney. Haley Mills. If you haven't seen it, it's a great movie. A little girl who's... Um, Hitchcock's not on his bumper anymore. <laughs> you know, maybe it was a Volkswagen sitting on its rear bumper. I thought it was Alfred Hitchcock for sure. Or at least, as, you know, it's his, his silhouette from, from the show. So, um, so yeah, so, so she, um, you know, she, she's, the one, she's the one that makes everybody else happy. She's the one that elevates everybody else's spirits. Right, then something bad happens to her. Right. And a tragedy. Right. And she becomes very gloomy. Right, yeah. I don't want to say much more than that because it's, it's, it's worth watching if you haven't seen it. It's, a, it's an old Disney. It's an early color movie with Disney. Right. A Disney movie. It's, it's, a, it's a really... It's a it's a very elevating movie. It's almost as elevating as um, the sound of music. Oh. <laughs> you got it. Oh, I love the, the sound hills, of music. The hills were alive, weren't they? Oh yes. But thankfully, uh, it wasn't like in a lot of movies where the hills are alive and they they come and they um, and they roll over and crush <laughs> and crush people and zombies come out of the out of the glens and the woods yeah. and stuff and mangle everybody. And this, I, this is one where the hills were actually live with a with a positive <laughs> spirit and the sound of music. Yeah. And it was based on a true story. I think the family, the Von Trapp family, the Von Trapps, yeah. they settled in Vermont, I think, and they're still living descendants There's, of the Von Trapps. There, there may be still yeah. a couple of them left alive, but yeah, and the movie, the movie actually, as I recall, takes place in during, during, in Austria during yeah. the Nazi occupation. Exactly. So there's a lot of there's a lot of bad stuff happening around them, and, right. and somehow they managed to um, escape. They managed to escape through their um, just their their they just. With the help of the nuns, the nuns helped because Maria von Trapp was uh, she was about to become a nun and take her final vows. I remember that, yeah. And okay. uh, yeah. the head mother superior says, "Well, I don't know if you're ready yet, so why don't you go off and be a nanny to this this ca- sea captain?" Who had yeah, there, that's right. And then yeah. she gets then she gets her guitar out and starts Dominique, Nika, Nika, Sano. Oh, that's a different movie, isn't it? That's, yeah. that's, a, that's a different movie, but, the, but, the, but they had. But Julie Andrews did some good songs in that, and she's got a, a, a great voice. Yes, she does. So um, no, but I, and I love Christopher. Plummer. She didn't do Dominica. No. Oh, okay. No, 
<laughs> I don't know. What so Christopher doing. Plummer's in that. He sings Edelweiss. Edelweiss, um, yes. Okay, yep. 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 Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. And yep. so she she falls in love with the sea captain who has, he's a single father, widowed father with like nine kids. Yeah. And, um, and then she, because the mother superior says to Maria, don't use the convent to escape, you know, as an escape. To escape from wanting to live your life. Okay, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so I haven't seen the movie in a long time, but I remember you're, yeah. you're bringing a lot of it back to me. So, and then yeah. she marries the sea captain, and then they yep. they then the Nazi <laughs> occupation of Austria, and then they have to like sneak away, and they come to America. They cross through the Alps. Yeah, cross the Alps to Vermont. Yeah. <laughs> well, eventually. <laughs> Eventually, they run like a ski lodge or something, and they run into the Green Mountain Boys. <laughs> Hopefully, it's possible. How about um, let's talk about uh, the jerk, <laughs> Steve Martin. <laughs> See, now that was that was to me that was that was a an edgy movie in a, in a sense, but not yeah. in the sense that it was a, a young white, white man. man. White, white, white man, if I may, if, if our producer will allow us to use that term, yes. a young Caucasian an, that's kid right. that's brought up by a black family. family. And doesn't know he's white. Doesn't know. No. Yeah, doesn't yeah. know because, because he, he's his parents, yeah. he's his adoptive parents' ch- but, child. But he has no rhythm, so he knows something's no not No rhythm, right. yeah. <laughs> Oh. So, so give me a little, give me a little bit more about that because I'm now I'm confusing that with with airplane. Oh, oh well, Steve Martin he um he comes of age and his parents say sit him down and say you're not our son and he's like what I'm not black and they're like no you know you have no <laughs> have yeah, no rhythm. That's the only way that gets that they know he's not their son is because he has no rhythm and and goodness gracious. So they send him off. And he hitchhikes, and he joins a circus or a carnival or something. And then uh, he finds that he has a special purpose. He does. And then he finds a dog, and he works at a gas station. And then he even falls in love with a girl. And then yeah. he becomes really wealthy because he um, he invents this thing on glasses that people can put glasses. And he becomes a millionaire. And then he, and all these people start going cross-eyed because he puts this thing on the glasses and people are, like, staring at this thing on the glasses. Oh! So they sue him and he loses everything. And uh, remember, he's like, all we want is this, like, ping-pong paddle and, and you know, no, that's, well, that's for No, that's Forrest Gump. No! With a ping-pong paddle. No, no, it's that toy with the ball and oh, the Oh, the bomb, bada bada bing bada bing bada bing bada bing Okay, yeah. Anyway, he loses everything, all his friends, his mansion, his money, but the girl he loves, Bernadette Peters... She still loves him. With the him. kind of kinky hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she okay. She still loves him. And then somehow the the parents from come, you know, his adoptive parents, his parents, you know, they come and they all end up back together on the, you know. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. How about... That just uh, goes to show life's just a, a, life's just a bo- box, box of chocolate. Chalk- 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 you, ne- you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> no. And Steve Martin didn't know either. Oh. Okay, here's one. Okay, you go ahead. Here's one. There's a movie that's called Snatch, and no, it's not a porno movie. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's got a great cast in it. It's, um, it involves um, a bunch of people in a, a jewelry heist, in a diamond heist. Ah. And uh, there's a gypsy family who's um, the, young, the oldest son is played by Brad Pitt. And the gypsies, um, when they talk amongst themselves, who's ever around them really has no idea what they're saying because you can't understand a damn thing that they're saying. Great. And this is how they get to. This is how they negotiate with people because they'll they'll negotiate and uh, and anyway. So so they're they're gypsies. Okay. In in Ireland, and um, and Brad Pitt is is a boxer. He's a he's a bare fist boxer, and he's a, he's pretty good. But it all kind of revolves around this diamond heist. And and I, without going into a lot of detail, it's it's a it's it's a pretty crazy movie. And I'm going to recommend it for Brad Pitt fans, for uh, Benicio del Toro fans, oh, yeah. um, and for the all-time, the all-time great of all greats, Dennis Farina. I'm king of the world. Well, somebody, you know, some, no. will somebody throw that dude overboard? Yeah, I heard that Brad Pitt's pretty good in that movie. 
Yeah, he's he's good, and they're all they're all good. Yeah. they're all good. There's a bunch of bunch of very well known actors, and, and a bunch of not so well known actors that, that fill in the uh, fill in the cast pretty well. Um, so that's Snatch. Huh. And uh, I don't know whether I should throw in another Brad Pitt one, Fight Club. Have you seen that one? No, I haven't. But they make soap out of out of human beings or something. I'm a big it's soap. All fan. about it's oh, it's all about the soap. But no, yeah. but actually the soap. Oh. It's it's all about a couple of young guys who end up actually not being a couple of young guys. Oh. And I won't say any more about that. They're not a couple of people. Oh. But um, yeah, it's about soap. It's about a young man who. Um, who Edward Norton's in Edward there. Norton brings in actually it's one brings in the other okay and they're and there's they're taking um they're going to the the clinic where you go to to have the, the fat sucked out of you oh liposuction the, 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 the liposuction clinic oh interesting and, and they're and they're taking the soap they're taking the fat uh-huh. they're boiling the fat down right. making this this uh, very expensive soap to take to the expensive stores uh. who will sell it to white women Mostly white women Interesting. who are who are using this soap that that may very well have come from inside of them. It's kind of crazy. Wow! And the, the boxing scenes are pretty interesting. Um, it's 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 oh. kind of a wacky one. I would recommend that one also. It, but it is it is it's about more than about the soap. <laughs> I thought it was like boxers that would die fighting that they would use the bodies, kind of like a Sweeney Todd kind of. A, now they uh, um, okay. now they, they they start this they start this fight club and rule number one of fight club is and there's rule number one uh-huh. um, one minute. Uh, rule number one of Fight Club is never discuss Fight Club outside of Fight Club. Nobody, no, they, no the rest of the world oh. should never know about this little clicky group of, of young men oh. and some older men. They get together occasionally and uh, beat the tar out of each other, huh. all in fun. Oh, okay. So it's 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 kind of um. So throw me another movie, and we'll and we'll uh, start now. We'll start now, and we're Mr. Gonna, Mom. Mr. Mom. We're going to start with Mr. Mom. When we come back All right. to uh, to do uh, to do our uh, Thursday noon thirty Moody, show, no. so we're going to come back and talk about Mr. Mom, right? And Progressive Soup, David Stevenson, yeah. and Emily Volpe, and Stick I guess, around. And I guess about two hundred and fifty guests, which are probably down in the basement yeah. at this point, because <laughs> one sat on the other, sat on the other, sat on the That's other, right. and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're all they're all down in the basement. Maybe we can find maybe we can find them and then and and. You know, sit them all up one on top of the other in the chair, and maybe they can join our discussion. I think that would be fun for tomorrow's show. That's right. And progressive soup. Thank you for joining us. And uh... that's right. <laughs> Have a good day.